Hey guys, this is Nate and this is the Nader Tater channel. All right, today I'm gonna do a walk around of my little micro van here. So this is a Suzuki Every Join Turbo van that I just got imported from Japan. So I'll go through uh, the features of it, things uh, I've noticed so far, why I got it, what I can use it for. Um, I would encourage everyone to subscribe to my channel, hit the bell icon, that way you get notified of new videos. I cover all kinds of stuff on my property here, about uh, 47 and a half acres. And uh, some of it's car stuff, some of it's technology, smart home, um, some of it's kid stuff. So um, take a peek and see if you like it. So for the van itself, uh, it's a 99. And in Japan, they use these around the city. So they're very, very basic. You know, it's not even like uh, I had a Chevy Spark before. If you've watched some of my other videos and I use that Chevy Spark to drive around my trails, I have about five miles of trails. They're fairly benign like grass uh, small hills get a little bit of mud in them but uh, this is even more basic than a uh, u.s economy car so you can see there's nothing to these kinds of door panels a lot of missing uh sound deadening you know on the door trim but i do have a radio heat air conditioning and i have a stick shift with a push button four-wheel drive system and uh, there's not a lot to it. Like I said, it's very basic. The engine and transmission is actually underneath the seat. So if I look down here, I can see the engine up here. We have a transmission with a transfer case to get um, a front drive shaft and a rear drive shaft for those axles. This vehicle, the vans don't have lockers, are a high-low range, at least on Suzuki. Uh, the trucks, the little um, mini trucks, they do often have um, at least the option of locking uh, front or rear uh, diffs. So um, this guy has obviously sliding doors. It's got a seat that uh, this can fold down flat. It's very well thought out, actually, um, from a, a usability standpoint. So this folds down flat, and then you have a really uh, fairly large flat uh, floor here for storage. Not exactly sure the dimensions. It looks like it's about six feet um, long, and then you know probably about four feet wide or so. But so that's um, you know they use these as basically work vans over there, just like they use the work trucks for the mini trucks. Now for me, obviously to make it more off-road capable, we have some very aggressive mud tires on it. Now for this one, it has uh, the turbo version. And the turbo version gives you about 60 horsepower versus about 50 without it. So uh, it doesn't seem like a lot of power, but this thing is surprisingly peppy. One is the gearing. They're geared very low compared to American standards. So you, um, you accelerate quickly with that and you run out of gear. But um, the other thing is they only weigh about, they weigh less than 2000 pounds. So they're very lightweight vehicles. As I was saying before, they're very basic. Um, so all the sheet metal's thin. You know, this one does have a little bit of damage, some dents and dings here and there as they're used. But they have doors on both sides. You have the fuel door. Let's pop open the hood here. This one actually got some damage in shipping. That was, it was rubbing up against the vehicle in front of it on shipping, which is disappointing. But I got some uh, plans to fix that up here. So let me... Uh, All right, so pop the hood open there. You can see you get a little uh, brake uh, master reservoir. You have coolant uh, for the engine. You have your jack and your little um, rod for releasing the um, the spare tire. That one's actually popped out of place there. All right, that's popped back in place now. Then you have windshield washer fluid. You have your radiator, your air conditioning ports, and your wiper motor. So not a lot to it. And this is what I was telling you. I mean, this here is the front of dash. So that's where, uh, you know, almost your knees are and your feet are down below that. So there's not a lot of space up here. Now, if you want to look underneath, if you want to get access to the engine or battery, that kind of stuff, this is really cool. This flips up. You got some latches here that come off. And then the whole seat folds backwards. And now you can see your battery, your little tiny uh, three banger engine. It's like a 600 or 660 cc, uh, I forget which one, uh, engine. And 
you can't see a whole lot underneath here obviously this is where the turbo's at on this guy you can see that you can see how you fill up the oil let's go to the other side and see what else we can see when we flip up the driver's seat all right okay now the driver's seat's flipped up so now we can see our air box we can see ac we can check our oil dipstick there and um you know you have alternator and accessories right up here um so it's not the best access for some stuff for sure but you know you can get access to a lot of it through these seats um fairly easily if you can't get it from underneath so that's what there is here obviously um it's a little bit unique driving uh stick shift with your left hand i've had to learn that because uh, everything is you know opposite the other big thing that's confusing on a right hand drive vehicle is the stalks are reversed so if you want to put your blinkers on it's the right stalk whereas in america that would typically be the left stalk so you know, the way you can tell of a person that is not used to driving a right hand car uh, when they go to put or they go to turn and put a blinker on the left stalk that they're, they're used to actually does the wipers so you'll see them doing wipers instead of a blinker uh, so i've been trying to uh, avoid that myself on here so in here there is not um anything really in the back to talk about like i said there's no um features back there they have the gas cap here that opens up and uh you know i've had this out as you can tell on the trails some and it does really well i mean really you got to give a lot of credit to the tires because they're so knobby so it gives a lot of grip but the thing since it's so short and it has such short front and rear overhangs it can really climb up uh, things that you wouldn't expect a little tiny van to do and that's because of uh, the size and the weight it's actually quite capable and the amount of storage you get out of this you know i've had the razors before this guy i paid about eight thousand dollars for and that's including all kind of any of the fees and duties um, that are engaged with it with it being a farm use only so it's not 25 years old which means i can't register this for the road in most states there are some loopholes there but for the most part i don't consider it a street vehicle it's really an on property vehicle but it gives you a lot of the comforts and features of a car and it's the price of a used razor that's all open air and two seats so this one i can throw the kids in the back and put car seats in here and we can go around the trails and the property with heat and air conditioning that we can't get um for anywhere close to that price on something else now the other thing i'll say is it has a radio but the japanese radio uh, frequency band is different than america so the radio really doesn't work uh, here in the u.s that's something that uh, i may or may not switch out with a another american um, single din um, radio there but um yeah so stay tuned if there's something that you will like to see this thing doing or have questions about it put a comment down below i do read those comments and i will answer them um, as quickly as i can so put it out there and then uh, look forward to seeing some other stuff you might also see on my channel i have a fire truck so a little mini japanese fire truck that i bought alongside with this guy i have a walk around of that and some other videos of that guy in action so check it out and uh, take care